All right, so we'll continue the unboxing. You can see everything's all neatly packed in here. Great, comes with the pipe. Um, but again, the whole package is 73 pounds. So uh, I'm just gonna do a quick slideshow of uh, yeah, unpacking and then uh, we'll get to the uh, installation and use. Everything's unpacked and uh, we'll just go through the parts here. Obviously these are the legs and what I found amusing was they actually give you this uh, extra little padding in here which is something you could actually start a fire with. That's cute. Um, then you got the grate for the inside. Put the wood on and then these uh, side grates go on here. Like so. Uh, you got your spark arrestor screen here. Interestingly, there is no cap for the pipe. Um, it's all stashed in there. Um, so you might have to buy something like that. This is the damper, it goes inside. And another grate over here. So uh, next we'll put it all together. So I'm gonna back up just a little bit. Uh, when I was putting the legs on earlier, the uh, two on the left side of the stove were drilled out with a hole um, for the set screw or set bolt to go through. Um, this side has no hole. And so when you go to pick up the stove, the legs fall off. So what I'm gonna do is just take a drill bit and make a little pilot hole right there without stripping the threads here. And then I'm gonna take the leg off and finish it up with a bigger bit um, that matches the size, or is just slightly larger than the size of the set screw. Just a manufacturing defect, I imagine they overlooked it. Create the pilot hole. All right, then we're gonna finish up the pilot hole, make it big enough for the actual uh, set screw. It's super tight, but it's not coming off of there. This is setting up the pipe, and uh, each piece you can see is a little bit bigger or smaller than the other piece, so you want to keep them in order. You unpile them here. The only consideration I thought about was if you try to install this inside somewhere, you're going to have to change um, where the through wall goes, and uh, that might affect how tight the through wall pipe goes, um, you know, because these are all different, slightly different diameters. So as you can see here on the bottom, there's a hole on the bottom pipe. This is the first pipe that goes in up here. Actually, it's gonna be like that. But, uh, so your flue goes in like that, flue pipe. And then uh, you're gonna take this rod out and uh, insert it in here so you can get your damper down in there. So to get the rod out, you just twist this here like so and slides right out. And then you're gonna put the flue in, I'm sorry, the damper 
inside the pipe so it lines up with these holes. And then you just put your rod through to secure the damper. The instruction booklet doesn't illustrate um, how to put the uh, spark arrestor in, but it just says put it on the top. It comes uh, folded like this, and you just kind of have to work it around there. It's kind of hokey, but um, that's how it goes on if you're only using a straight-up pipe. Okay, now this is the funny part. Are you ready for this? Wait for it. This thing like goes all the way up to the moon. So that's pretty comical. But uh, hey, better to have too much than not enough in any case of anything. But you can imagine if the wind blows, that's not gonna last long. So I've got a few other options in mind with uh, regard to piping and uh, whether I'm gonna put in a shed or shit hits the fan scenario where there's no power, no nothing, and I'm out of propane through the outside of the house wall. We can talk about safety about those considerations uh, some other time. But for now, let's just see what kind of configurations we've got as far as options go. That is not gonna work. Uh, you're gonna have to uh, put some flue tape around those joints, probably some clamps. And then I would actually probably, if it's not inside a structure or a tent, I'd probably uh, use some sort of pipe to uh, solidify that structure. Uh, before I started this whole thing, um, as far as assembly goes, I went down to Home Depot or Lowe's and uh, got a six inch elbow and a five inch elbow because I wasn't really sure. Um, this opening's a little bit smaller than six. Uh, it's closer to five actually down here. So I got two just in case. I also got a reducer. Uh, this thing here goes from six to five just for uh, pre-planning but if I throw this one on the not the top but the next one down um, I think with a little negotiation it's gonna it's gonna work and then also if I just want a cap uh, this is a six inch cap rain cap and uh, Looks like that's going to need an adapter. So, anyway, it was a guess. Let's see if it fits on there. So, yeah. Fits on there, but it kind of plugs up at the top. So, kind of in between here as far as where this is going to fit just for testing purposes. I might just take one section down. See how this cap fits. Looks like it is going to slide over the top of that. There. So that one does fit. That'd be the third section. So if we put this on top. There we go. So for today's purpose, I'd say that's a lot more manageable. Less likely to get blown over by the wind. Um, Got your damper here, that's open, that's closed. And uh, I'll probably throw the screen in there. I'm not gonna build a rip and fire today, but uh, I'll throw the screen in there just to be safe. Um, that's a pretty good start. So I think I'll go ahead and test it with some fire.
All right, so we've uh, started it, and we are just gonna close this up, make sure the vent at the bottom's open, so it draws a draft up through the top. Oh, we gotta open this up. There we go. And we're just gonna let this thing cook, get it going a little bit better. It'll burn off all the toxic paint smell if you end up using it inside of a shed or a hunting tent or something. That'll probably help. All right, she's cooking. There it goes. Just leave it cracked a little bit here. Get it going good and then I'll put some more wood on it. Now let's play around with the damper a little bit. So I'm gonna close it up. It's fully open right now, but let's close it up a bit and you can see the flame change. We're gonna open it. Well, the things I like about the features of the stove are um, number one, it's got a nice big flat surface on the top uh, to uh, heat up or boil water or whatever. These can be used as a drying rack or just to place uh, cooking items on the side. Uh, this is pretty nice. See, you've got a nice little isolated handle so that you can open it up without burning your fingers. Um, the, the grate underneath the wood is good, good placement, allows draft to come in through the, uh, the vent here, which also is, you can open and close it, as well as uh, adjust the rate of burn. And that's one of the big things when you're at a hunting camp is you gotta get up every hour or two hours, throw wood on the fire. If you can figure out the right combination of draft um, to get the wood to burn longer, uh, you're not, you're going to get more sleep. So that's important to me. And, um, you know, overall, you know, other than the uh, weight, it's a pretty good, I would say maybe an elk camp stove with the right attachments, you know, to go through the, uh, tent wall or the roof, whatever the case is. So, uh, I'm pretty impressed with it at this point. You can follow the links in the description to buy this stove. I am an Amazon affiliate. Um, and everything that you buy helps support my channel and allows me to buy things like this myself. Um, nothing is given to me for testing, so I buy everything out of pocket. I use it, I test it, and then I do the, uh, the videos. So also please subscribe. If I get enough subscribers, then I can get support through YouTube since they changed their uh, subscriber requirement to a thousand. That's going to be pretty tough for me.